Let's do it. Hello, everybody. I believe we should be on air. This is a live stream all about the brand new AMD graphics cards, full reaction. I want you to actually get involved. Let us know in the comment section below. You are going to have to bear with me a little bit as we do this because I've got the multi-camera set up. I've even got the AMD live feed that's uh, not quite so live anymore going. And I've written my usual lovely script. But trying to go through everything live and do the comments and do everything is going to be tricky. So bear with me. Let me know if there are any issues. But I think let us begin. So the headline news. AMD has unveiled their flagship graphics cards for 2022 the Radeon RX 7900 XT and the RX 7900 XTX. So yes, we've got an extra X this time. These new cards are set to compete with Nvidia's top end, with 70% more performance than AMD's previous RX 6950 XT. Remember they had the RX 6900 at launch, then they did this refresher that was slightly more powerful but essentially the same. So yeah, we're definitely going to have a real fight on our hands. But then here's the thing and the real kicker. The price. We're going to start with this. AMD ended with it. Today we're going to start about that. This graphics card, the RTX 4090, which in theory is the competitor, cost the US around about $1,600. It's $1,599. Whereas the new AMD one, yes, I know, this isn't it. This is the last generation, but it's going to look very similar, is $999 US dollars. So what's that? $600 less? Yes, 600 less. That's mad. So in theory, if we're talking just performance alone, then this needs to have what? Well, this needs to have 60% more performance in order for the price to performance to be the same. That is incredible. Loads of similarities between the two. You've still got 24 gigabytes of VRAM. Not that anyone's really going to be able to use that anyway. But on pricing alone, I think it is definitely a big, big win for AMD. I've then written down money, which I've talked about. Live questions. That's right. Again, people just joining us. Get your questions in, and we'll be answering them throughout, we, throughout the video as we go. Now I can move on to the next bit of the script. But here's the thing. Not only is this new card cheaper, frankly, it's actually better in a whole bunch of other ways as well. Firstly, DisplayPort 2.1. I don't think this is necessarily a huge deal at the moment. But as of next year, there are going to be lots, or maybe not lots, maybe some, high-end displays. And they're all going to land, and they will require DisplayPort 2.1 for the full bandwidth. So you've got over 4K resolution, over 4K, 240 hertz. It's going to be pretty incredible. And there's actually a new Samsung Neo Ultrawide that AMD announced on stage as well, which should be pretty darn cool. They call it 8K, but it's 8K Ultrawide. But the point being, this is going to require DisplayPort 2.1. And guess what is the only card that is going to come equipped with DisplayPort 2.1? That's right, it's AMD, not NVIDIA. So regardless of what you think about these super high resolutions and refresh rates, because I'll be the first to admit, I don't think it was a massive problem on the 4090. I don't think many people are going to be playing at over 8K60 or you know, potentially over 4K, 240 FPS. But the fact of the matter remains, if this GPU, you can see it, if this GPU is $1,599 before you add your US sales tax, whereas the new one is $999, I mean, that's just a bit crazy, isn't it? Even if it's not a feature that you must have and you need right now, it, it should be the other way around. Surely this should be a feature NVIDIA are touting rather than the other way around. It's, it's pretty, pretty baffling, if you ask me. Hello to everybody in the comments, by the way. Hello. We will be getting to you in a second. Alex, hello. Titus, hello. Matt Miller, hello. I think the arguably more relevant news that's more important than potentially you might think, though, is the power consumption and the size of these cards. It's no secret that NVIDIA's latest uses anywhere between probably about 400 to 450 watts. It's rated for 400, but in practical terms, it actually used about 400 in my testing. Whereas the new one from AMD, they're saying it's going to use a peak of about 355 watts. So this means that your power bills or your utility electric is going to be lower. 
Your physical graphics card can be smaller because it doesn't need to disperse as much heat. And thanks to the two 8-pin power connections, you probably don't need to get a new power supply either. The level of availability isn't clear right now. I think it's potentially not going to be great at launch, but you can grab yours from December 13th, which is when the whole thing actually lands. But here's something I do want to make very, very clear, and something I think a lot of people, I don't want to say haven't worked out, a lot of people might not be crystal clear on. Just because this 4090 is the top end NVIDIA card, and this, again, it's not the real thing, this is the top end AMD card, it doesn't make these the same. They're not necessarily direct competitors, even though they are the top of the stacks at the moment. And the reason I'm saying this, and the reason I want you to take everything with a fair pinch of salt, is because if it was a direct competitor, AMD would have told you. They would have told you in the live stream. Notice how they never compared to the competition once. They didn't say, they didn't have any benchmarks comparing it to any of the NVIDIA cards, new or old. And I would bet my cotton socks, they probably are cotton actually, they're quite nice socks today, they're luxury Levi's ones. Uh, hashtag ad, it's not, that's a joke. <laughs> uh, I would bet my cotton socks that if they were direct competitors, then they would have told you. So <laughs> how much this matters remains to be seen, but don't go thinking that AMD has undercut Nvidia by five, six hundred dollars, because in terms of real world performance, we don't actually know what the difference is gonna be. And then we move down, we move down to the script. This is not as slick as I'd like, but we're doing it, we're doing it. So yes, the 7900 XTX might not actually be the competitor to the RTX 4090 that you may have thought. We did learn that at 4K FSR, you can expect about 300 FPS in Modern Warfare 2, Apex Legends, and Overwatch 2. 4K FSR, 300 FPS. Let that sink in for a second, that's pretty darn crazy. I'd wager that we're probably looking at real-world performance versus the 4090 actually going to be about 4080 level, potentially a bit better. If I was a betting man, I'd actually say it's probably going to perform slightly better, but we don't know. Neither of those cards are here and neither of those cards have actually been tested. But even if it has RTX 4080 price, um, even if it has RTX 4080 performance, sorry, the price is actually going to be a fair bit lower. And then you also have the DLSS elephant in the room. I would love if someone's a graphics artist to actually draw a DLSS elephant. That would be amazing. Drop it to me on Twitter. You'll get two thumbs up, you'll get shared. That would be really, really cool. But the way I see it is that it's a bit, it's a bit naff that this is the way it works, but Nvidia has DLSS and they've just launched DLSS 3.0, which contains uh, the new frame generation technology that can work on even CPU limited games to actually increase your frame rate then also the DLSS super resolution that we've seen for a while. This is currently locked in to NVIDIA. So the only way you can access this is to have an NVIDIA card. The only way you can get frame generation is to buy one of these new NVIDIA cards that supports frame generation. AMD has the open source FSR. And even if the quality was exactly the same, it still means that if you have an AMD card, then you, you can't access DLSS. Whereas if it's the other way around, then you can access uh, all of AMD's FSR. So this alone means that in the title that you probably want to play, so things like Warzone that exclusively support DLSS, you feel like you're going to miss out a little bit. That, that, that's just always been the way. It's a shame. This might change over time. More and more games are supporting and adopting FSR. I think they announced that Forza Horizon 5 is going to, which is great. But ultimately, it's going to depend on the game that you want to play because it is going to depend on the game that you want to play and whether you can actually enable these features. So this alone, I would say, is a little bit of a downside. But that being, you know, that being said, there is a new competitor to DLSS coming next year. It's not currently out at the moment. So you've got DLSS 3.0 with NVIDIA that can completely transform games like Microsoft Flight Simulator, uh, Simulator and Cyberpunk into an eye-watering masterpiece. AMD at the moment, they don't have a competitor. Next year, there will be. They have announced FSR 3. So uh, what does the F stand for, actually? Super resolution. Anyway, <laughs> it's coming next year. And it looks to do very similar things to DLSS frame generation. They haven't specifically said how or why, I guess. I would imagine it is going to be like a frame injection technique. 
and hopefully it'll work at the driver level. So it's going to actually work in loads of different games. It's going to work well. But obviously the benchmark for this is going to be NVIDIA's frame generation techniques, which at the moment do add, I don't want to say too much latency. They add a, a large amount of latency that I imagine will come down, down over time. And the only way AMD's implementation is going to work and is going to actually sort of compete with this is if the quality and the latency are going to be quite similar. There's also the question of ray tracing as well. We know that it's about 50% better around this time, 50% better. But what does this actually mean? And what does it mean versus NVIDIA's cards? So 50% was the actual performance they quoted per unit, let's say. But for me, it all depends when you're actually in the game. So let's say you're in Cyberpunk, you're getting 80 frames a second at whatever settings. If you turn on ray tracing and then it drops to 45, Let's be honest, you're not going to want to use that setting. You might want to use it for photo mode or certain scenes to see how it's cool, but you're probably not going to want to play at that. So I'd say the benchmark for ray tracing is 60 FPS. A lot of people will happily trade the quality in something like Cyberpunk for ray tracing as long as they can get over 60 FPS because the latency is not the end of the world. And I think it's fair to say NVIDIA are probably going to win on ray tracing. They've or they were on, what, their third generation of ray tracing cards now, whereas AMD are on their second. But the question goes out to you. This is a live Q&A almost as well. Uh, as I said, we'll be answering the questions at the end. Do you actually turn on ray tracing? And if you don't, what would make you turn it on? How good do these new cards have to be, both NVIDIA and AMD, to be fair, for you to actually use these settings? Because this is crucial, and any like AMD or NVIDIA person that's watching this in marketing, they probably want to know this information as well. But so yeah, there, there are definitely some negatives with these launches. Uh, as I say, the DLSS is the main one, ray tracing potentially as well. But I would say that on the whole, this has definitely been a bit of a kick-ass launch really, hasn't it? I mean, lower prices, the same or higher quantities of video memory, lower power draw, smaller physical sizes so you can fit it in your existing chassis, and then of course DisplayPort 2.1. I would say this is going to be a little bit tough for NVIDIA, right? I mean, what on earth are they going to do? Well, this is the question uh, I see a lot of people asking, especially on the comments below the AMD video. You know, AMD, uh, uh, NVIDIA, sorry, are, are screwed. What are they going to do? Well, they've still got all of the cards, really, at the moment, because like it or not, brand loyalty is definitely a thing. People might buy an NVIDIA card because they've always had NVIDIA cards, they like them, just as they might buy AMD cards because they've always found they work and they always want them uh, in their system. So they're always going to sell cards like that. But then also you do have to factor in the exclusive features that we've already talked about, like it or not, they have them. And that is a selling point, if you like, for NVIDIA. But then also the reason I say they hold the cards is because they are actually out at the moment. They know how well they're selling. They're potentially out of stock at the moment, but we don't know how much stock was actually released and how much is in reserve. And we also don't know about performance, because remember, if this card is not actually the same in terms of performance as the new AMD card, then they can say, well, it's a better card. We're going to charge a premium for that. If you don't like it, don't buy it. Then there's the RTX 4080. It has not launched yet, and they might find that there is actually a fair bit in different performance. <laughs> They might find there is a difference in performance, and thus they might just choose to lower down the price. I don't know what their profit margins are. I think the RTX 4080 actually uses the same cooler as this. I'm not sure. I haven't got one yet, so I can't testify that. But you've got to think this has actually got to cost a fair bit of money to implement all of this cooler. So I think it's a bit of an easy one for NVIDIA as long as they've got the margin there. If they are actually in trouble and people are flocking to AMD, they can just lower down the price. This is what used to happen. We don't remember this anymore. I do. Something like the uh, RX 480 when that came out. That was a brilliant card and the 470. Because it undercut NVIDIA, you didn't have all of these exclusive features and it was just the one to recommend. It was like, well, buy this. It's clearly the best GPU for the job. And here's, here's the thing, right? Here, here's the thing that I think, again, a lot of people aren't talking about. As much as we like the performance of the RTX 4090, this wasn't something people had complaints with. CPU bottlenecking is a thing. And actually on AMD, I'm going to be really interested to test out smart access memory because I think a brand new AMD Ryzen CPU with their G4 
GPUs, you're probably going to get a decent uplift in performance. Whether this is the same on Intel with resizable bar, we're not sure. We'll have to do that testing. But don't, don't forget that CPU bottlenecking is a thing. So unless you're playing at one of these sky-high resolutions, chances are you're going to see some bottlenecking, especially 1440p. So a 1490 isn't necessarily what I'd recommend anyway, because you're going to run into these problems. So even if the new card's performance isn't as good, does it matter? Because you might not see that extra performance anyway. And maybe let's say you are going to play at sky high resolutions and things. Guess which GPU actually has the brand new DisplayPort 2.1? It's AMD. So you wouldn't be able to play at like stupid high resolutions and stupid high refresh rates on the NVIDIA card if you're looking for one of those specific displays. So it is a very, very interesting space indeed. I think that is the end of my written section of this. I have summed it up well. What would I buy? I have written here. That's a very good question. What would I buy? I would probably be looking at the 7900 XTX. It depends, again, what you wanted to play. But as long as you weren't relying on something that's specifically all ray tracing or all DLSS, you need the combination of both. Your title is clearly going to work on an NVIDIA card. Then I think this is the most compelling AMD launch that we've seen in a very, very long time. And I think it is very, very exciting. And honestly, I cannot wait to get testing, even if it just means NVIDIA lowers down some of their prices. But if you want to go for like a smaller chassis, you don't want to use this new power connection. AMD is using the older one. I think there's definitely a lot to be said. But until we've actually tested the performance, we won't know for sure. And I am slightly concerned that AMD didn't show benchmarks versus the 4090, because even if they just came out and said, you know, the cards, I suppose they wouldn't come out and say the card's not as good. Maybe that's why. But We'll wait and see. How close is the performance going to be? Let me know down in the comment section below. And I believe this is now your time to shine. Hello, comments. Let's get involved. Tech Hunter says, where's Editor Carl? He was not invited. Uh, he stayed too late yesterday, so I had to give him the time off. It's all right, Carl. I can just read off the screen. It's OK. Uh, let me know down in the comment section below, by the way, if you're watching this after the fact. But OK, let's get some, let's get some comments going. What have we got? What have we got? Hello to Old Wolf Tech, who's talking about Euros. Yes, that's the other thing as well. Correct me if I'm wrong, please put in the chat down below, but I think we haven't seen UK pricing. And UK pricing is probably going to be more because of exchange rate plus tax, VAT, same in uh, Europe. So you're probably looking at around about what? 1149, if they really mean 1200 uh, in the UK. 1200 actually would make sense because let's call it one to one. $1,000 plus 20% tax, £1,200. But let's hope they go for 1149 uh, That's probably the UK pricing anyway. Yeah, people saying no UK pricing. Uh, what are you going to go for, by the way? Um, are, you going, are, are you more interested in AMD this time around? Or are you still thinking you're waiting for like NVIDIA 4080, 4070? Let me know in the comment section below. Hello to Jebat from Malaysia. We like Malaysia. Uh, been there, have some Malaysian friends, lovely, lovely people, lovely country, have been. Can't wait for Benchmark Marcus, says Nasty Yoda. Well, I'll tell you what, Nasty Yoda, Benchmark Marcus, he died a couple of years ago. We've been through this. It's Benchmarcus now. I hired someone else. Uh, my insurance, I'm down as having one employee, but actually, you guys know the truth. Benchmarkus needs to be on that as well. For, li for legal reasons, he, he doesn't. He's not, a real, he's not a real thing. It's a joke. Or is it? You find out. How long till they will be sold out? Again, this is the question. I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that they don't hold the stock back and everyone can get one at launch, but I think scalping is going to be real, especially with the AMD stuff this time. I think they, they, ha they struggled uh, last time around, didn't they? It was a bit, a bit annoying, really, getting hold of one. But st stock availability should be better. But if they're cheaper, you've got less, well, you've got more people that can actually afford to buy them. Although, obviously, cost of living crisis at the moment, very, very real. So uh, I don't know. AMD, is, AMD still don't seem to be as competitive with creative applications, though, which is a shame. But they have actually said in the press conference that they've got a new sort of media encoder engine or something that should give you like 20 to 30% better performance. And I did see, and I think it was a Hardware Canucks video, um, that for some reason, Resolve works really well with AMD cards now, so that, that could be pretty cool. It all depends on whether they support CUDA properly or they're going to adopt some AMD technologies. 
Uh, do, 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 do. AV1 encode slash decode. Yes, AV1 is on, I think, all of the new cards, actually, Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA as well, which is cool. Uh, smart access video. Yes, I believe that's what it's called. We've got a super chat from Ethan. Thank you so much, Ethan. That is, that's very, very kind of you. That one pound will go towards some paint. If we hit 40 quid, we should be able to buy the tin of paint. We need to paint that wall now. Do you like the set, by the way? We've changed it around. Carl helped. We painted, so yes, it was good. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, doo -doo -doo. How much do you spend on each video you upload daily? I mean, that's not relevant, but uh, the next, when we get the overhead camera, as I said yesterday, five grand. We upgraded the set with five 5,000 pounds or so. Might be slightly less, four and a half. So fun times. New lens. This is the new lens, Carl. It arrived. Here it is in all of its glory. It's actually pretty, pretty cool, actually. So yeah, they all have AV1 encoders. Callum says he's thinking about a 3070 Ti and a Ryzen 7 5800X. Not relevant to the video, Callum, but we can't be angry. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, that is actually a very good combination. 5800X is cheap at the moment. Uh, Steve has a 4800, says it is killer. Well, I hope uh, you know you're using it as a phrase. Uh, let, you know, he's quite he's quite heavy. Don't want to bash someone on the head with that. Um, is undervolting better than overclocking? Well, they're different things, really. It depends on the performance you're trying to achieve. So overclocking is putting more power into something, trying to get it to do more things, get more performance out of it, whereas undervolting is essentially trying to keep the performance you've got now, but then lower down the power so that it still works properly, but you're using less power to achieve the same amount of performance. No scalpers, please, says Aaron. Absolutely. Do you think the 6950 XT will drop in price in the next couple of weeks? Yep, almost certainly. Uh, I would guess, though, that if you're a retailer, you don't have many in stock, you're probably going to not drop the price massively because you're going to wait to see how many cards you get in of the new ones and how uh, quickly they sell out because you'll still have something to sell. If you drop the price and then you've sold everything, you've lost a little bit of profit. Um, will video editing be good for AMD this time around? As we've said, they've got new technology, smart access video, which is pretty cool. Um, hooray for USB-C on the 7900 XT. I didn't even notice that. But NVIDIA used to do that on their cards. Um, can I go grab one? Where is it? Here it is. Yes. And I was really sad that they stopped this. I was very, very sad. Look. We can come. We do, do some magic. Look. Here we go. Look. Here we go. Look. Look at this. Oh, it's the wrong. Yeah, that is the right camera. There we go. Um, minimum focus distance, there we go, look, USB-C, see that? Pretty cool, it's this one here. And you could just use this as a USB-C port as well, which is nice, but they don't do that anymore, which is a shame. And chances are my focus is probably not perfect anymore. That's all right, I'll go with that. What have I missed, what have I missed? Uh, how do we do a poll? Uh, participants, pop out chat. Carl, can you do us a poll? Can you do that remotely? That would be pretty cool. Can you do us a poll? D very simple, AMD or NVIDIA? We'd love that. Love your Kurtzkes art posters in the back. Yes, and I actually have some bonus merch coming. Don't forget, the PC-centric mouse mats are coming in about three weeks. Stay tuned, they are coming. And I've actually got some posters made up as well, some poster merch that will be coming phase two. Same sort of designs. I've seen the first one. Oh my God, it looks so good. So Kurtzkes art, sadly, is going to disappear. That should be pretty cool. Marcus says GPU vault. I don't have a GPU vault. I have a broken GPU on the shelf. <laughs> um, I keep the other stuff in like a storage unit, uh, nice and safe, so we can keep stuff as and when we need it. Carl says, I don't know. Get on it, Carl. Come on. Come on. But yeah, honestly, I was very, very impressed with all of the AMD stuff. I thought it was super, super cool. Again, reiterating the fact that if it was me, honestly speaking, I think this is the first year I'd if I was looking at spending a thousand pounds, I'd actually now at the moment be feeling like it was more likely I was going to buy AMD than Nvidia, which is really, really cool. But Nvidia just need to change pricing round, and then I think they'd be back on top. It's all about price to performance. Don't worry too much about brands unless you need specific features like that DLSS or the ray tracing in the certain games. For most people, it is purely just about price to performance. Spend the right amount of money, get the maximum amount of performance that you can. So do I think RX 7900 XTX is better than 4090? No. If you missed the start of this video, this is the main takeaway I want you to have from this video. 
this is not going to be equivalent to this. I mean, definitely not. That's uh, 6,800. They didn't compare the two cards directly in the stream. They did this deliberately. This wasn't because they forgot or they didn't have a 4090. They almost certainly know that the 4090 outperforms the new uh, 7900 XTX. Probably not by much, though. I would say 10%, maybe. But if you're asking 60% more money, this and not 60% more money, and you don't have DisplayPort 2.1, suddenly this is looking a little bit more of a tricky tricky purchase, but if you want the best, then I guess you want the best. But define the best. That's the question, isn't it? What is best? Uh, the, co the coil wine is horrendous on this 4090 I have. Oh, is it? I've found this has been amazing. This is the best Founders Edition they've done. I haven't heard any coil wine. Really, really cool. Uh, I'd be interested to know which cards you're using there specifically. Um, is it a third party one or is it also a reference one? 22 minutes and no gameplay. Well, look, I can press this button and we go to their live stream. I mean, obviously there's no gameplay. I don't have one. Come on. This is, this is talking about whether it's good. Does AMD have ray tracing? Yes. Yes, it absolutely does. It says it's 50% better, but we don't know whether that is actually better. Or what does that mean? 50% better than before, but it wasn't great before, really. And uh, obviously NVIDIA ha have got even better cards for it now, so... Yeah. Um, more questions. Editor features doesn't let Carl do a, a poll. Oh dear. Well, I don't know how it works. Uh, is it done? Ah, oh, I've done it. So yes, we're doing a poll. We're doing a poll. Here we go. This is it. We're doing a poll. Uh, also, wanted to shout out his uh, jersey here. I think that was really, really cool. Don't. I, I, I guess there must be some sponsorship angle there somewhere. But yeah, RDNA three shirt. Adidas getting some promo there, not bad, not bad at all. Yeah, I'm gonna actually I'll leave that on. I'll leave that on while I'm. Uh, I'll do this poll. So Nvidia or AMD. AMD. Nvidia. Ask your community. Right, go my pretties. <laughs> fly, fly. Ask, ask slash answer the poll. Go away. No, not no, not that one. The opposite. Um. Yeah. Linus Tech Tips figures they think it will hit and it's close. I don't know what that's in a response to, Richard Fox. Uh, da, 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 da. Do you think the new Radeon card will ray trace better than NVIDIA 3000 series? I think you're probably going to get similar levels of performance, which to be fair was okay. Remember, it's all about overheads. If I'm playing Cyberpunk, I'm getting 105 FPS. I can drop down to 80 with ray tracing. I would turn that on. If I'm getting 85 frames a second and I drop down to 40, I would not turn it on. Uh, usually I do something in the middle, turn on some of the ray tracing, but not all of it. I actually think uh, ray traced reflections is the one that I'm most likely to turn off, just because the alternative in-game stuff looks pretty good anyway. And I personally think the ray traced shadows and the ray traced lighting actually look better in the real world. They don't in screenshots, which is why everyone's talking about reflections. But in Cyberpunk, ray traced shadows and the lighting actually makes quite a big difference. Um, the reflections aren't, they're sometimes a bit low res. I'm not actually a massive fan. Um, let's have a look. Where were we? So, yeah, that answers your question, I think. Uh, Salar2322. Stephen Brader, I wonder what the reason is for the low clocks, if they just limited it to keep the TDP lower so they could overclock it more, or if it's because of the chiplets or something about RDNA3 limiting the clock speeds. That is a good question, actually, but I would say don't worry too much specific about the clock speeds. It's all about the picture at the end. I imagine you will be able to overclock these cards quite a lot, and especially with like aftermarket ones. Here's actually something I haven't talked about yet at all, which I think is actually worth considering. And I'll illustrate by grabbing a RTX 3090 Ti. This is actually the <laughs> last graphics card I have on the shelf, I promise. What are people like Palette going to do? Because usually they have a cooler design and they stick it on all of the current cards. AMD in their press conference made a big point about how their cards are small. They're smaller than Nvidia's. You see, look at that. Even the big chunky Nvidia one is still smaller than the third party cards. So are companies like MSI, Palette, Asus, Gigabyte, 
going to get these coolers and then are they then going to put them on the AMD cards as well? And if they did, that would sort of counteract the whole point that they're making about the cards being smaller. So is it just that they're going to put smaller AMD specific coolers on? Companies like Sapphire that only do AMD ones, do they suddenly have an advantage here? It's an interesting space. But something that is definitely not um, very interesting with NVIDIA's cards is that you get this horrible adapter that looks bad as it is, and as we know, uh, is questionable when it comes to some of the soldering on this. The crimped ones are better, that's fine, but the more you bend it, the more you run a risk of it breaking. Plenty of videos out there if you want to watch or learn a bit more about that as well. Uh, when will reviewers have benchmarks? Haven't heard anything yet, genuinely, so... Probably we, we get the cards end of the month, start of the month. Uh, Simon's talking about 8K. They were talking about a lot, a lot about 8K, but it was 8K FSR. They, not that I could see anyway. I'm sure we can find it somewhere in the notes. They didn't specifically say what, which FSR setting it is. Chances are it's going to be like one of the lower quality settings, so like 1440p upscale to uh, 8K or something like that. Don't know that for sure, but it's not real 8K. But then NVIDIA also do this with DLSS, so bear this in mind, but it's still valid. If you're playing 8K, you'd want to turn FSR on, so I think that's kind of fair enough. Uh, when can we see the benchmarks? Um, we'll see the benchmarks, well, when we can, embargo date, so it's probably about the 10th or so of uh, December, maybe slightly after, slightly before. Um, let's have a look. Do, do you think you, we've done that one? We've done that one. Where, where's, what, what? Why is my 3080 Ti underperforming? My dad was mining with it. I don't know. <laughs> you have to ask him. Uh, duh, 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 duh. We've got someone spamming. Sorry, we can't have that. No good. Zero tolerance. Zero tolerance here. Are you going to build a full AMD system? Yes, that's something I want to do. Smart access memory, the works, that would be really cool. Because again, I think with smart access memory, you'll actually be able to get quite a lot more um, performance versus maybe going for like NVIDIA, uh, the same sort of thing. That, that would be interesting, wouldn't it? How will the 4080 perform on an AMD system versus the 60, the, the 7900 XT perform? What, like, what will the difference be versus on an Intel CPU versus an AMD CPU? And if there is a big difference, is it going to make an all, all AMD system actually worth going for? I have had a bad experience with AMD drivers, never trusted them since. Well, when was this though? Because you could say that about a lot of things. I'm not, not saying that their drivers are good, not saying that they're bad, but I don't know. I, I Here's the example, this is going to sound ridiculous, but I, many, many years ago, when I was like eight, I went to, in the UK, a supermarket and bought a cream custody donut, and it was off, violently ill, and I haven't really been back to that supermarket ever again. And I don't like that supermarket because of that incident. Is that fair? Is that the same as your driver experience? Maybe they've come on a long way. Maybe the supermarket isn't actually selling um, a bad donut anymore. <laughs> That's quite a good analogy, actually. I'm going to go with that. Would you still recommend an RX 6800 XT? Yep, if you can get it cheap, if all these cards come down in price. Yes, but obviously the issue then run into is potentially next year, the cards you'd be able to buy at the same amount of money that you've just paid could perform better. NVIDIA is just so greedy, says Kurt Anderson. Uh, I don't know. Remember, greed is, is, is relative, right? Um, I'm not saying they are, not saying they're not, but they are literally legally obliged to make the company as much money as possible because they're a public company. AMD is the same. They think that charging higher prices is justified, but I think this is going to show... This whole launch, I think this is going to show that that's actually uh, not the way that they should have gone. But like I said as well, they're sort of almost not fixing the price, but they're trying to, if they, if they start the price high, gives them somewhere to come down to. Whereas if they'd started the price low, uh, that they would have had less places that they could have actually gone. So from a business point of view, I don't think NVIDIA have made a poor decision. It's a poor decision in terms of sort of brand loyalty though. So maybe that is a poor decision. Let me know. Do you think, uh, do you think if the XTX provides the same performance as the 4080, but for $200 less, it will take over a significant amount of market share? Fantastic question. I think the answer is no, all because of supply, demand, availability. I still think 
all of the new cards at that sort of level are going to run into a, an issue where I, I think you'd be able to buy them easier than before, but I don't think you're going to be able to buy them all of the time. I mean, look what's happening in the 4090. So if it was a case of you've got unlimited uh, 4080s and you unlimited uh, 7900 XTs, uh, then it might be different. And I would actually, actually say, yes, I think AMD would win a lot of market share back. But if there aren't the cards for people to buy, then you're going to run into the same sort of issues that you had before. So hopefully that doesn't happen. But assuming infinite stock, I do think at the moment that NVIDIA are legitimately in a little bit of, I wouldn't say a pickle, but they're just, they need to bring the prices down, definitely. Um, maybe not with the 4090, depends how much more powerful that is than the XTX. 4090, two times price, two times power, exactly. You know, using more power. Not two times the power though. As I said, about 400 watts this uses real world. So the new AMD card, I think we're probably gonna be looking at real world about 320 watts, but we'll have to test that a little bit later. And if you wanna overclock, obviously you can get more or buy like a overclocked version. Um, yeah, build an all AMD PC. Yep, I'll do that. Will they produce white editions? I don't know. I mean, someone will. Definitely, if, if, if you want white GPUs, they're more popular than ever. Uh, Marcus, I've just bought a used 3090 Founders Edition for 700. Was that a mistake? No, I think that's fine. I think that's absolutely fine. 3090, I thought, was actually a better card than the 3090 Ti, because the 3090 Ti, in my opinion, was a bit too loud. Depends on the cooler, but I uh, wasn't a massive fan of the 3090 Ti. Uh, Evan says, I want to build a Steam Deck PC using open source software, but it only works with AMD, so I might be jumping ship. Why wouldn't you put Windows on it? That's that's my question. Genuinely, let me know. Why wouldn't you want Windows? That's quite an interesting thing. Is it worth getting a 3090 or a 3080 Ti on Black Friday or waiting around? I personally wouldn't buy one. I wouldn't buy one. This is coming from someone that I, I love having the cutting edge hardware. I bought a 6, 680 on launch. I bought a 980 on launch. I'm one of those people. I like to have the latest hardware. But it's more a case of, as we don't know what's going to happen with price and availability, it's hard to say. So the usual sort of, sort of thing applies. If you need the horsepower now and you find a good deal, go for it. If you're happy with what you have, but you're just looking to do the upgrade, then maybe wait until a little bit later and then you can make a better decision. That might be bad advice because price and availability might be bad again, but we don't know. Uh, for the next gen of NVIDIA graphics cards, 5000 series, Will NVIDIA change the architecture? Yeah, they always change the architecture. So uh, the, fight, the, the series is basically the architecture. So previous it was Ampere, now it's Ada. Um, what was that before? Ampere was Pascal. So yeah, that always changes. They, they'd probably release more cards like a 4090 Ti at some point, but, or a 4090 Super, but that will be the same architecture. Um, boom, 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 boom. Faisal, Faisal, is that how you say that? Do you think if the XTX provides the same performance as the 4080, but for, oh, I've done that question, apologies, done that again. The chat seems to like move in the wrong way, which is a bit silly. Do you think pairing these cards with AMD CPU to take advantage of SAM? I'll be testing that, but I actually would probably be saying at the moment, yes, but as we've discussed before, AM5 is a very expensive platform, so I would be a little bit wary of that at the same time. Should we go to two? There we go, let me see a man talking again. I love this setup. This this streaming deck is just amazing. It's called the Atom Mini Pro from Blackmagic. I, I was using some some smart stuff there. Would you like to see a Corsair GPU? You know what? That will probably happen at some point. I, I don't know whether they have the manufacturing to actually make them though. That's the only thing. But they've done collabs and things before, uh, where they put their own uh, sort of like AIO and things on them. Um, AMD drivers has got better now. I actually agree with this. Very very cool. A770 until the 7900 XTX is out. Interesting play. Um, A770, I've got a lot of things to say about that. Basically, when it's good, it's really good. Um, when it's not so good, it's not so good. It's, a, it's really weird. It's a very strange GPU. Cool for some people, but probably not for everybody. But I think actually that is the consensus. Most people know that already. Uh, let's catch up to live chat. There we go. Can a 4090, oh, I say live, they've all just pinged everywhere. That's the problem with uh, going for live, isn't it? NVIDIA CPU, no, they, they, they're not gonna do that. NVIDIA is better than AMD, says TVZ. Uh, the poll, by the way, we're looking at 
that 61% of people say AMD, but I wonder how that will translate into what people actually buy. And does NVIDIA actually need to change things around? That's the thing. Um, have you seen the FPS charts on AMD's site? They show 4K max settings, and they seem to be 25% to 30% lower than 40.90. I wouldn't trust anything until we see the side-by-sides. Um, but if they said it's 70% 70 70 faster than the 6950 XT, that probably makes it about 10 to 15% slower uh, than 40.90. But we don't know just yet. We don't know. Refreshers of consoles with RDNA 3. I mean, I'm sure they'll refresh them at some point, but all the time they're able to sell them very easily. Again, they don't necessarily need to do that. Uh, do you sell your old hardware you don't need anymore? Uh, it depends what it is. Most of the time, it sort of this goes back to the manufacturer or we reuse it. Um, things like cases, I obviously don't keep for very long, but generally uh, we try not to sell stuff. It's more just sort of send it back to the manufacturer and things. Depends if we had something lying around for like three or four years and obviously we have to get rid of it. But um, it's we don't ever get it in because we want to sell stuff. That wouldn't be very ethical now, would it? Um, do, 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 do. 4090 costs like $400 max. What? I don't understand, don't understand. Stop and drop. I have a 3090 and it does everything I need it to do. I don't really, I don't, I really don't see the new, I really, sorry, I'm, I'm, I, I can't read today. I really don't see the point in upgrading currently. So I believe the main shoppers are scalpers for the new cards. What do you think? I wouldn't say that because people always want to upgrade. But again, one of the main points I wanted to get across with uh, the 4090 is that it's CPU bottlenecked a lot of the time. So I actually personally wouldn't go for a 4090 because I'd be playing at like 1440p probably. So I'd see a lot of bottlenecking. Even at 4K, you see some as well. Uh, if you've got latest gen Intel, you're probably just about all right. But you're still going to see some bottlenecking. Uh, our man in the hoodie's back. He, he, he clapped himself a lot, didn't he? I didn't really understand why he was doing that. No one else did that. That looks a bit odd. But then I suppose this whole stream looks a bit odd, so there we go. Uh, what do I think about AV1? I need to do some more testing with it. I think the CPU overhead, from my experience, still is a little bit higher, but I haven't tested it on the NVIDIA cards yet, so I need to try that. Uh, Ricardo says 7900 XT, because CUDA cores could be more useful. Oh, but the CUDA cores could be useful. Yeah, again, it depends what you want to use. But I think a lot of people are saying at the moment 7900 XTX, and I think that's really good for the industry. Really, really good. Uh, someone was set on a 4080. Oh, it's pinged around. Goodness sake. Why? Why has it disappeared? Why does these? Why do these things happen to me? Loads of comments, which is good, but it does mean that it's tricky to actually read them. Your mic has much noise. Uh, I will try and fix that. It shouldn't do, but there we go. These, 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 this is what happens when you do things live. We'll try again. Uh, I'm seriously broke. Can you help me out? No. <laughs> Someone drops a like. Get subscribed as well. Uh, any more questions? Let's, let's end the poll. 60% of people say AMD. So it's, it's still quite close, but people are definitely uh, quite interested in uh, going for AMD, as I am. Let me know what games you want me to benchmark as well, by the way, uh, if I do get one in. Hopefully when I get one in. How bottlenecks does the last gen display port make the 4090? 99% of people are relevant, okay? Because most people are going to be playing on a 1440p 4K TV monitor, not over 120 FPS. But if you have a specific use case where you want one of these brand new monitors that do have display port 2.1, it's a bit of a bummer. And the fact that this doesn't have the longevity of the AMD card is actually quite disappointing. People called them out for this in the review. But actually, real world probably doesn't make too much difference, but it is definitely a bit of a negative, I think, it's fair to say. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, here he is. Oh, yeah. Callan says he was set on a 4080, but after seeing the sheer size of the 40... Uh, after seeing the sheer size of the ROG Strix, size and power requirements are a joke, so he might actually go AMD. But again, what happens if the Strix is exactly the same size on AMD? You'd be in the same boat. But actually, the AMD stock cards tend to be quite good. So if you can get hold of one of them, all good. Um, are, am I excited to learn that it can hit 3 gigahertz? Uh, potentially, yeah. I'm, I'm excited to, to try it out for sure. Do a bit of overclocking. Definitely. 
to uh, do GF355, building his first PC, what do you recommend, uh, 4090 or 4080? Budget, not a problem, just thinking about processor. <laughs> AMD, <laughs> don't know, we uh, don't buy anything just yet, is, is the honest advice. 4090 um, is great and quiet, but it's got, got some issues, main one really being price. If it was, I wouldn't. Sp I wouldn't spend that much money. I wouldn't buy a forty ninety for me personally. It's not to say it's not a good card. Um, I'd consider buying one for like the channel, obviously, uh, for editing purely for like a editing like sort of thing. But for me, my gate personal gaming needs forty ninety overkill. Uh, AMD or Nvidia? We've just done that poll. People said AMD. Um, do I like cheese? Yes, yeah, it's, it's all right. It's pretty good. Did you know it's actually uh, genuinely addictive? It's got an addictive c compound in it. That's why we like it so much. Uh, the AMD was uh, event was awkward. Was it? I thought it was good. I thought it was good. Forty ninety for editor Carl. <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> Probably not. If I'm honest, you, you need to justify it to me, Carl. We've just spent all of our money on overhead cameras and C stands. Uh, Marcus, I'm looking into having a system built. I've moved into an RV and travel full time. What would you recommend? I have had problems with laptops. Like some sort of ITX system would be cool then. Uh, ITX, maybe not a massive monitor. I guess you'd have to mount, if you try and mount it somehow so it doesn't move about when you're moving. It's going to be tricky. Laptop would definitely be a lot more appropriate, but I do understand why you wouldn't want to do that. Collab with Linus one day. You have to ask him. Maybe. I don't know. We had this story yesterday. Um, I've only ever met him once, and he was playing badminton or something. He had his rackets with him, so didn't really have a chat. Uh, but, yeah, there we go. I think that is probably the time to end the stream. But thank you so much for, for joining. Anyway, I hope it's been, been cool. hope it's been useful. A bit different uh, to do this as a stream rather than to go through everything. I think actually it did work all in all. It was a bit weird sort of reading off of the script. I did have a little <laughs> backup uh, print out as well from the, the script I'd written earlier. Uh, then I remembered that my highlighting doesn't actually uh, show up because I've got a black and white laser printer, which was fun. So I, I, I read it off the laptop, but it all worked out. I love having the little buttons though. Look, there you go, available December 13th. 999, 899, very, very cool stuff. But thank you so much for watching this video. Comment, subscribe, all the usual stuff. If you're wanting to watch a video that's really good, unsung hero video, go watch my speed build video. Uh, that's on the channel. Uh, I, wh for whatever reason, people didn't click it. That was genuinely so fun. Go watch that. It's good. But thank you so much for watching this video. Oh, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll catch you.